Change the matrix. Yeah, just saw the cat Sorry. go. Hello! Welcome to the Flickering Torch. I'm Ben, the host, um, and today we're going to be playing Knight's Black Agents, a gumshoe game. Uh, here's the wonderful book. Um, so, let's introduce ourselves. We'll start with Big James. Please, can you uh, introduce yourself? Hello, I'm James. I play games. Well, Excellent. I, th I was kind of hoping my <laughs> sip of beer would, you know, be the length of that, but you, you finished off pretty quick there for me. All right, uh, Jordan, please go ahead. Um, I will need to change a little thing, so it just says Jordan at the minute, but I will change it to MasterCard in the future. Thank you very much. Yeah, I say, like he says, I am Jordan. Um, I've been, not been playing games too long, but friends with these guys for a little while, playing games with them for a bit, interested in the settings, so thought I'd jump in, give it a try. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, and then we have the big dog here, I think. Uh, big big fish in this pond, at least. Sean, please, can you introduce yourself? I'm Sean. I've been playing games for five minutes now. Um, so, uh, you know, I no experience was. No, I've been gaming for quite a while, so I've got to, I've got to do my best for Ben tonight. I'm dressed up for the occasion, because it is agents, so we are ready. Ready to roll for you. Right, so Knights Black Agents is this really cool setting where we're all essentially, well, I'm not, but the players are going to be playing Jason Bourne-esque spies, um, hunting down conspiracies in Europe. Our game isn't going to be set in 2020, because otherwise all the spies would be sat at home. Uh, so we're going for like a 2015-ish era. Time doesn't really matter, because I don't want to Google when things got closed. Um, yeah. So 2016, 2015-ish. Uh, so, okay. so fairly, fairly modern, but not, not today, because otherwise, we'd, again, we'd all be sat at home. So, let's go in reverse order, introducing our characters very quick. So, Sean, can you introduce Mace Hunter, please? Yeah, I'm, I'm Mace Hunter, six four, American con man. Uh, he's everything I'm not as a person. He's he's beautiful. He's chiselled. He's six packed. I'm more like Lur pack. Um, he's got everything that you could want. Um, he'll get you into places. He's the kind of guy that he's your he's your ideal man, kind of on the front line, able to infiltrate groups, that kind of thing, give intel back. Um, nothing seems to phase him, or obviously phase him. Um, and he's the kind of person that seems quite calm in a crisis. But behind those kind of steely eyes, there's definitely something not quite right with Mace Hunter. Excellent. Can you give us your uh, military occupational specialty, please? Um, I would say it's d military occupational specialty is, is disguise, if I'm honest. It's disguise. Yeah. So no matter what, Mace Hunter, he can disguise himself. That's his real gift. Blending in, changing clothes. You'll see that, for example, in, you know, Mace Hunter can, if it's necessary, change. He will change quickly. He will become it's not that kind of stream, Sean. <laughs> yeah, he will change. Sorry, if this lady's present, I do apologise. But it's, you know, he he's will changed. Change. <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> brilliant. Absolutely the brilliant. The Mace Hunter will change quick into something. Father Mace. Father Mace. <laughs> face to the face. So, yes, he can be what you want him to be, depending on the situation. I love that. That's excellent. Right, so for people who didn't watch the rules explanation over on the Flickering Torch, MOS, or Military Occupational Specialty, is where the players fully take control of the narrative. They'll say, I've got an MOS in disguise, for instance, uh, and then Sean will narrate to everyone on the group how exactly he succeeds, and he will always succeed at it. They get to use it once a session. Right, so let's go for Jordan. Can you introduce us to Leo, please? Yes, my character is called Leo McEnroe. 
and he is very much sort of a bit of a rough upbringing, kind of raised, but learned to fend from himself from a young age. Um, like, obviously moved into the work from there. A bit of a hand-to-hand -hand fighter. Doesn't really like to use weapons as much. Bit of a brawler. Um, and much sort of a sort of the opposite to um, what Mace would be. I guess he's a, he's an infiltrator as well, but more of a subtlety. He will get you into a place unseen and sneak you sneak around without anyone knowing he's there. Get in and out. You can follow people as well. He will be able to track people from wherever they go, wherever that may be, and then beat them up when they get there. Very nice. And what is his uh -huh. military occupational specialty, please? His MOS is hand to hand. Oh, so whoever we're up against, you can just take out pretty much. Oh yeah, they they're not yeah they're not standing much. I'll just make a GM note to always use guns right now. Okay, thank you. <laughs> oh really? <laughs> right. Okay. Excellent. Thank you for introducing Leo Macanro. Macro? McCann? McEnroe? McEnroe. There we go. McEnroe. I'll get there in the end. Oh, God. We've got another one. Right. So, James, can you please introduce <laughs> us to Halbjorn? Yeah. Nice. This Halbjorn, he's, uh, he's been doing a bit of work around Europe, and he's uh, from Norway originally. Uh, so you have to apologize for the, the bad accent. Uh, it's the best I can do. Um, he specializes in uh, getting rid of things. So no matter what the things are, they just get rid of them. So he's kind of a wet worker style hitman esque character. Indeed. Very, very nice. So if you want it gone, we make it gone. Ah. What's your name? I'll be on. I'll be on. That's H A double L uh B J O R M. Well, and luckily for everyone, I have another screen right there. <laughs> luckily for everyone on the stream, it's written right underneath your name. So uh... that's nice. I can't see that. Fantastic. Okay. <laughs> so was McEnroe, was it Leon McEnroe? Leo. Leo McEnroe, right? Okay. Leo McEnroe. Lovely. And yours was Sean. Mace. Very easy to remember. Mm-hmm. Take a mace, mace to or the face. face. It's very easy to remember, I think. Excellent. So, uh, again, in Knights Black Agents, it's kind of the modern day. Uh, you've all been brought together. You've all kind of worked with each other in the past on certain sort of off-the-reservation-esque jobs. Um, the Cold War has been over for years, and Bush's War is definitely over for you guys. Um, so you've been sort of left out in the cold. Your agencies set you loose in Central Europe or wherever you've been for the past few years. And you hadn't heard from them, uh, maybe in two to three years, and then you realised if I I never intended to uh, be contacted by the agency ever again. <laughs> so you guys then realised you kind of had to fend for yourself and start to do some sort of undergroundish jobs, maybe a morally grey area um, for yourselves. But I mean, that's where you guys operate uh, in the in the moral grey of the world. However, things haven't been going great for you recently. Um, a string of contacts have either disappeared entirely or been found with their chest cavities literally ripped open and their hearts missing. Um, you contacted... Oh, nothing to worry about then. <laughs> a little bit seriously, they could, uh, you know, at least leave a note. Ugh. Well, uh, there was actually a, a single scrap of evidence found by Leo... Uh, at one of these crime scenes, a, a do you want to describe what that is actually for us, Leo? So yes, what Leo has discovered at one of these gruesome crime scenes is a single playing card. It's quite an unusual card. He doesn't really, he's never seen anything like it before. It's of a suit that no one, again, he hasn't seen it before, and he's very curious as to find out what it is. It's quite an old card, very aged. Um, pretty discoloured, and um, the suit of the card that he's got is called Yellow Spectre, and again, he's never seen anything like it, and it's piqued his interest. So, because it piqued your interest, you uh, you got involved with a contact that you all have met before, uh, Lucia Chero, who, when you contacted about this specific card, you've known her to always been this sort of, like, very steel monolith of a person, like, nothing can phase her, uh, and as soon as you mentioned this card... Lucia, she cut ties with you firstly, and then three weeks later sent you an encrypted message telling her to meet, telling you guys to meet her um, in Milan, outside the Duomo di Milano, the giant cathedral 
um, in Milan. You're supposed to meet her outside there in three days. Uh, you're able to get into Milan, uh, and if you want to do any prep work in Milan, you can totally do that. Just let me know. Um, but you're supposed to meet her outside the Dumo di Milano uh, at noon, and she's got some information for you. She can't put it over anything technical. She says something about a wire hook on anything technical. Um, if any of you have got digital intrusion or sort of digital forensics, let me know. Digital is saying. I've got electronic surveillance. Would that do you? Uh, if you give me, wrong, if wrong you, sp how many points have you got in electronic surveillance? All, all of one. <laughs> all of one. One single point. Um, yeah, I will. Have to excuse me, looking up. I have a screen there as well. <laughs> yeah, that, that's fine. Um, <laughs> if you want to spend that point, um, I can tell you uh, what you think that might be. Although you don't have digital uh, intrusion or anything, so you only think you might know what it is. I do not. I don't think I need to spend that point. I think she means she's being wiretapped. Yeah. Okay, you can take from word. that whatever you want. It might not necessarily be correct. Is, it may not be, but that's the kind of conclusion <laughs> I've come to. And frankly, I, I don't really want to <laughs> meet her, particularly after the last <laughs> time we've met. We know that we know this girl. So, what was her nationality, if I may? Uh, she is Italian. Uh, you've never yeah, actually so. seen her in Italy, and it's actually kind of odd that she's come back to Milan. Um, Fair enough. So um, you think she's running her, scared. What was her English like when we knew her? She can speak like fluent English. She she was a spy, so she she she's kind of fluent in English because it's it's easy right, to right. eavesdrop on the Americans. I'm just wondering if uh, it's a grammatical thing, wire hook, wire tap, being listened to. It could be. It could be, or it might be like a specific like piece of software, um, or some kind of spy lingo that you've not really heard of uh, since you've been out in the cold for a while. Yeah, I'm gonna take. I'm gonna take a wild guess that it's uh, being wiretapped and listened to because she's scared of putting it on onto anything technical. Okay, so are Wait, we we're doing going to Italy, Milan? Yeah, Italy, Milan. You can get there okay, totally this... fine and land there yeah. with three days prep time. So if you want uh, to do business anything. suit, uh, Italian shirts, uh, naturally a few magazines uh, regarding you know Vogue, uh, various magazines that would make him seem that he's interested oh. in fashion. Well, you, you, um, take the, you take the little girly magazines. You don't bring bullets. That seems a bit silly. I'll bring no different kind of magazine to the game. I'm sure he will. Um, I, I'm going to focus on that kind of cover. I'll uh, use my normal Italian passport, and I will go under. Uh, I will still go under the name Hunter, but it will be uh, Thomas Hunter for the purposes of the passport. It will be a British passport. Thomas Hunter is your alias, who is a Brit. A Brit yeah. for this purpose of, of landing in Italy. Yeah, uh, he yeah. has vague connections with uh, fashion magazines and various other sites. So I imagine like what we see sort of f the, the camera eye uh, is Mace Hunter opening up this like suitcase and just like it's just lined like rim to rim with passports uh, and you sort of thumb he'll pick through. out pick out the passport that he wants he'll he'll have a look double check the picture probably slick the hair across a bit more to one side change out the suit a little bit go into the shirt Practice the British accent in front of the mirror a little bit, and then get cl everything ready to set off for Milan. So, so I think what we have see, done flawlessly. Uh, <laughs> I what... think the traditional British accent should survive. For this. <laughs> so, what we see is like a few snapshots of uh, Thomas Hunter, and he is actually like he looks to be a fashion model in all these snapshots we, that kind of flash through the screen. Um, and yeah, he's like... been in some very vague. He has been in some photo shoots to give him a great cover story because he's got that chiselled look. But the truth of the matter is he's no real fashion model, but it's just to give the cover that, that it's, it's appropriate for him to be in Milan and to be looking around and maybe shopping, that kind of thing, so it would fit in very well. Yeah, so we, we see some of these shots of uh, Thomas Hunter. It even says, uh, so for our camera eye view, we see like Mace Hunter, uh, and then you do all this sort of stuff. You get the passport out, and then the Mace gets like crossed off, and then it says Thomas Hunter above it. Um, and then we see like the fashion <laughs> shots of, uh, of you getting ready. I guess then we, we smash cut to you, uh, Hey Albion. Uh, so, so what is your sort of getting ready montage looking like? My getting ready montage? Um, that depends on how long in advance we got the notice to travel. 
You've got uh, four days, essentially. So you've got one day in your country of choice days. and then three in Milan. Okay. Um, so I think I'll probably... Yeah, I'll probably end up hiking across the borders uh, in unknown areas as a, as a tourist. Um, <clears throat> would take, obviously, you know, equipment to do the job. So that would be weapons, explosives, guns, whatever's needed to defend myself. Um, oh. Okay. But yeah, yeah. Look like, a, look, look, look like a backpacker, hiker, tourist, you know, three quarter length shorts, long socks, hiking boots, um, quarter staff kind of roll, walking, walking cane. I guess um, you've got like a, ba- a big back. duffel bag. Um, so yeah, what we see is bag. a, a shot of you sort of like hiking across some mountains and then like hailing someone to like, uh, like hitchhike. Yep. Um, and while you're like sat in the back, you're having this sort of like very casual conversation. You unzip the bag, and we just see like an M4 um, and a bunch of rounds and some grenades and stuff. And then you like zip it up. And you're like, oh, no, oh, nothing, just traveling uh, to this this person. A bit of plastic room. explosives. Uh, yeah, the usual, you know. Okay, so what do we see uh, Leon McEnroe doing? Leo. Leo. Leon. Ugh. Leo McEnroe. Leo. <laughs> Leo is starting off in his apartment in London. He mm-hmm. will obviously receive notice to travel. He doesn't. He doesn't tend to travel heavy when he goes away. Just sort of light traveling, picking up a few bit, a little bit, mostly just a single backpack type of guy. A few tinkering bits, like little, like you sort of EDC carry, tinkery gadgety bits that he has when he carries with him. He doesn't doesn't like to fly normally. He travels by train, so he'd head down off, off probably through the Eurostar, down into Europe, and then from there would get on to Italy. He like he's a scene. He loves the scenery. He likes to. Likes to take everything in. Yeah, so yeah. we've gone from these quite smashy action cuts of um, mm-hmm. obviously like mace getting ready and then this like uh, the, just like unzipping of the duffel bag of weapons and I guess then it like smash cuts to Leo um, and he's and he's just like on a train with like a coffee and he takes a sip. It's a scotch. It's a scotch. Uh, it's yeah. a scotch. <laughs> I get. Are, are you going like first class then? Are you like? Oh, he tra- travels. Like, he travels by train, but he travels well. Oh, okay. So, so we we go to first class, and you're just kind of sipping on this drink and like looking out the window, and then it says like, uh, yeah, like Leon McEnroe after it, and then you, and then you take another sip, and then and then we smash cut uh, to our opening shot over the skyline of Milan. Uh, we see like all of the different sort of uh, really posh hotels uh, and fashion chains. Um, do we want to do anything before we go to the cathedral? I'm just I would going... probably recce out the cathedral um, a couple of days in advance if I can, depending on travel time. Obviously, it's not essential because um, travel I travelled on foot, so yeah. I might not have that time. So the Duo di Milano is this colossal cathedral um, in Milan. It's sort of almost from the front. It looks like a, a white crown uh, with these like six massive spires that sort of like uh, meet up in the middle. Uh, the whole thing looks like marble white, um, and there's several like big doors at the bottom, and then like going up um, windows, uh, and then there's like a, almost like a small balcony thing just above the, like the main door in. Yeah. So entrances, exits. As a tourist, then tourist, there's a lot of entrances and exits. Um, there are yeah. buildings surrounding it, and she. Wants are, we to move planning, are we planning? Are we planning to be there? Come... Sorry, at a certain sorry. time, sorry. Are we planning to meet there at a certain time? You're going to meet her at noon, so it's going to be like right. busy okay. with tourists is the idea. Yep. Yeah. Okay, fine. Thanks. Okay. Sorry. That's right. Um, uh, I would also scope out the alternative ex- rooftop, rooftop, spire exits, anything where you probably wouldn't so there's, go as a tourist. there's no way from the sort of cathedral to get onto the roof, um, but there are buildings like next to it where you could conceivably like climb up to the roof if you needed to, um, but you wouldn't yeah. be able to jump across to the cathedral because there's like a fair sort of distance between those buildings. You'd, yeah, you'd yeah. need equipment to do that, so that's cool. Yeah, if you, if you wanted to hike on there, you'd need equipment. Um, you'd also see that it's, like, fully lit up dur- during night time, so um, any kind of, like, oh. info, like, you probably wouldn't be able to just come with a big ladder. Someone would definitely see you. <laughs> has to be. Yeah, yeah, it has to be. If, if it's you were wearing be, a high vis, it's very easy to... Yeah, we could definitely yeah, do high vis and a clipboard will get you everywhere. Oh, yeah. It's amazing what a piece of paper can do. <laughs> He's getting his dog collar back out. Yeah, get that back on. Um, I'm going to be making a point of... Uh, I'm going to be using one of my contacts here. 
Okay. Uh, Luigi Severoni. He's a uh, mafia contact. Uh, a, he's got connections a lot of pies in Milan. Um, yep. To get hold of um, uh, what would look like a, uh, I would call it, you know, the kind of thing you see the bag in The Exorcist, where they, they, you know, a priest will carry a certain bag of stuff along, and that looks quite normal, sort of thing you would expect. Yep. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be making a point before I go to the cathedral of making contact with Luigi Severoni for the usual amount, whatever that might be, to make sure I've got hold of my preferred. Uh, I'm not going in here without a weapon, that's for sure. I want a handgun of some kind, obviously a Bible. Um, I'll also have a uh, cardinal's hat and uh, a cardinal's sort of flock that I could wear as well, if necessary. So this is great. So Luigi will totally get you that. Uh, but when it arrives, you get the cardinal hat and you get the Bible and you're like, where is my handgun? And as you pick up the Bible and leaf through the first like five pages, the rest of them are cut <laughs> out. And the handgun's just been like put in the cutout there. So you've got like a Bible with like yeah. five <laughs> actual Bible pages and then just like a handgun just sat Fantastic. in there. It's just I, like a block. I, I thank Luigi. Sorry I can't talk on this occasion. Luigi, you understand. And uh, It's okay, my friend. He might not quite understand where my accent has come from because it is different than the normal one he's used to for me, but he's, he knows that I'm a little bit unusual and a little eccentric, so that's fine. Excellent. Yeah, he'll hand you that. You you hand him the however much. I think it's about $1,000 to, to get all uh, this yeah. stuff. Um, he f- thumbs through it really quickly, uh, tucks it in his pocket, and then he just says, pleasure doing business with you, as always. Thank you. Say hi to the boss. Yeah, we'll do. Uh, apologies for last time. Yes, he's, uh, he'll never forget about his daughter. Yes. Actually, maybe I won't say you were here. Yeah, might be wise. That'd be 2000 then, yeah? Yeah. You, right. you can hand over the money. You can get that kind of cash pretty yeah. easy. Just conning people, so. You'll, you'll sell them a bridge or something later. It, it, it's fine. You can get that kind of cash. Yeah, I've got a couple of ideas for cons. <laughs> right, so that's your sort of prep. Um, you scoped out the building. Is Leo doing anything, Jordan? So Leo is turning up, and he's he's going to scope out the surrounding streets. He likes cities. He knows cities very well. So he's going to be going around the surrounding streets, looking for potential exit routes from the cathedral, not just obviously ins and outs of the actual building, but routes out, possible spots to hide if anything went bad, or just Un- anywhere they could go to potentially after the meeting to discuss anything. Unfortunately, the front is like super open. Uh, there's kind of like a little mm-hmm. courtyard thing in front, so it would be kind of difficult to... Um to find some cover there uh you do notice like it's got this this kind of statue thing that's kind of like a like a box uh just like right out front you could probably use that for cover but if anyone tries to flank you you'll you're screwed pretty quickly um because it is essentially just like a big plane in front of you uh there's sort of like an arc de triomphe looking thing um over to the right if you're exiting the casino um you think like if you want to get out of here, you're gonna want motorcycles or something stashed really nearby, because uh, right. it's so open. Like, uh, are we planning on meeting her outside? Was that the what she said? Or was she it wants just to meet the... outside. Right, it's fine. I I think that's easy enough. Because, so obviously, I um, I arrive by a taxi, and um, I you know I have my dog collar on, and I have my bag, and I have my Bible in my hand and I you know slowly make my way to the outside as as any good sort of touristy kind of person might you know but obviously I'm here for different reasons so I, I just have a little wander around look around you know as you would but I'm not worried about being observed or anything like that but far from it I have no re- real precautions here I'm waiting to see who's going to turn up first okay uh, so what time are you sort of turning up uh, I'm five to just to yeah. kind of get the cover story right so just to blend it a little bit have a little look around at the architecture just you know pay attention to things that are there and be generally mingling around outside yeah so you're sort of you're walking around outside there's there's a lot of tourists um, bless you my son <laughs> yeah a few of them come up to you and start speaking in spanish and are basically like asking you to to bless them and if you could read them a quick bible passage i do speak fluent spanish which is one of my languages which is good um so i will be able to um very fluently reply in that but if it's anything kind of unusual then of course i will just say i do not understand but yeah you you give you bless a few people you're sort of walking around uh the architecture is beautiful um yeah but it's just like very hustle and bustle at the minute you can't quite see 
um, her, and you think he would give you some kind of like recognition symbol um, from sure. maybe your past, but like you're not seeing anyone like obviously like maybe holding like a fish or like flourishing like a magazine or anything. Like and the, everyone just sees the truth tools. is is the truth for the man of the case that with this particular lady, um, she's not the sort of person who's going to be late, right? Is that is that normally the case? Um, you know her to usually get that early, um, so right. it's weird that you've not seen her yet. Uh, okay. But also, she can like blend in because she she's a spy. But what you're sure. really looking out for is some kind of recognition symbol. Um, well, I'm being very open and not, um, very easy to spot. If she knows me, she's going to know it's me. I'm not making any attempt to particularly hide. I just want to blend in as best as can without really putting any great show on. So just to really blend in. Excellent. That's so, it. Holbjorn, what are you? How are you sort of arriving to um, the scene? Uh, I, as I'm standing there taking photographs with a borrowed camera um, with a tour group. Uh, I clock um, Mace coming in, blessing people. I think it's quite amusing to see him in, in, in his disguise. Um, I will be at the back somewhere with a tour group, just wandering around. Are you carrying like a uh, duffel bag or like what have you? Oh yeah, I have, my, I have my have my big big walker's backpack on. I still look like a walker, um, just a very dangerous one. Okay, so yeah, a few people are sort of like milling around. You know, one's really paying attention to you because you're not, um, you're not sort of trying to be a character that people would approach, right? You're just like a, a tourist, right? Yeah, just standing at the back. Oh, that's pretty. Click, click. Do you speak click. Spanish? Oh God, yeah. Oh, okay. So what you you're, what you hear is while you're stood in the queue, uh, you're like a big guy, right? Yeah. Yeah. So we'll you. Yeah, so, so you hear, like, um, an Italian man talking to his wife, and they, like, point at you, and they go, yeah, that's a that's a big guy. Because uh, they think and you I'll, can't I'll, understand. I'll, 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 I'll quietly lean over to them and speak back. That's okay, everybody else is very small. <laughs> yeah, the, 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 he looks super embarrassed, and he looks up at you, and he and he sort of nods, and, and, and he apologizes, and then and then him and his wife sort of, like, very quickly, I, like, I, scurry I, I, away. Before they leave, I put a hand on his shoulder, and I say, it's, it's, it's not a problem. <coughs> uh, not everybody is uh, as blessed. And then I let them go. Okay, yeah, yeah. He, he scurries off. He's very, <laughs> very clearly embarrassed. Leo, how are you arriving to this beautiful cathedral? Yes, so Leo will turn up sort of about a little bit early again, about sort of half 11 a time. You'll find a cafe around the edge. I'm assuming there's a, it's a square. There are sort of eating establishments around. Yeah, there's... Outdoor seating. He'll head there and he'll sit down. He has a, he has like some, a camera as well, very touristy looking. Not so much an outdoor tourist, like a, like a hiking tourist, but he's got a backpack, sort of travelers. It's like a day, like a carry, like a carry-on for a plane type backpack and obviously dressed as... As such, and was he taking in the scenery, and yet he'll go down as if he's just going to have lunch and is sitting, admiring the scenery, watching just as you would, just casually, sort of seeing the seeing the world go by. Yeah, you notice um, <laughs> very quickly this priest going around blessing people, um, oh, and and you yeah, think God. you see see you know your friend Mace. Oh ye, oh ye gods! I imagine what I see is the top of Mace's backpack, not Mace's backpack, Halbion's backpack. Yeah, he's like a head and shoulders above most of the people. He's, bob so. he's bobbing above. <laughs> like, oh god, it, it, it's god. fine. You get a good view when you're this tall. You don't have to worry about the, <laughs> you know, not being um, able to see anything at the back. Out of character question, sorry, um, Ben. I never really put anything. I'm not really sure how languages work. Do you have to have? It's in order to speak additional languages. Do you have to have points in it, or do you? Do you already know a set number? Like, uh, just as a I base read, level. I read this a minute ago. Let, let me just grab the page just very quickly. Yes. Sorry to halt the flow slightly. I'm it's all good, bro. Yes, we're all learning together. Oh, oh. This is only my like second time ever playing this, so uh, yeah, languages. Oh, you can get a ridic you can get a ridiculous amount of languages for three points because that's yeah, what it, I've got in it, and I've got yeah, I got I got three languages. I got three languages, which I thought was fine. Have you got any well, points in languages? I think one point is three, two yep. is five, and like three is thirteen. Yeah, that's right. I'm just trying to scooch. It's yeah, something along those yeah, lines. Yeah. yeah, I yeah. just so put it's, I it's, just yeah. put a a point in, and it four. basically allows you to be fairly fluent in it, at least spoken. Yeah. So that's or for each for each rating point in languages, you are verbally and literate in a number of languages other than your native tongue. So this is on top of whatever you speak naturally. 
So um, if you've only, if you've got no the... points, you only speak your native tongue, and then if you've got that's one right. point, you get th two yeah. others or three yeah. others, right? So yeah. for your yeah. for instance, languages two gives you five languages um, because it's plus three languages. So that's uh, besides your native one. Okay. Yeah. So have you got any points in languages? I haven't. No. Again, canonically, it's not really in Leo's line of work. His his traditional line of work was never really speaking to people. Yeah, you were just... you were supposed to get in without anyone even knowing yeah, yeah. you were there. So speaking exactly. So I think so. What I, what I'll do, I'll see obviously Mace blessing everybody around, and I'll see the backpack of Halbjorn, and I'll I've 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 been to Milan before. I do know some basic phrases, I guess. So we can we can we say that I know. Yeah, yeah, you you would know. Like... I know how to get. I'm not fluent in languages, but I know how to get by in. You can order a drink. <laughs> I look at the waitress. Find the lose. Bless you, my I look son. at the waitress. I order, I look at her and I basically I, I order, the scotch that I've just ordered. I ask her to make it a double because this is going to be a day. Uh, she she comes out with like an even more full, but like not even a double. It's like a triple at this point. And she uh, she sort of like smiles at you, uh, winks, and then like goes back to her um, goes back to oh, the other thank tables. You. Thank you. So it gets to about twelve o five, and you think there might Sunday. be something up. She is never yeah. late. Um, I'm going to wander. I'm going to wander into the building now. There's, there's no doubt about this. I've, having waited outside, if she hasn't come anywhere, I'm going in to have a little look around. Okay. Yeah. You you go through the the sort of tourist entrance and and yeah, I, on the inside it's I can as kind of the outside. Picture a kind of inside of the church, the pews that are laid out, leading all the way up to the sort of altar. Um, I will slowly. You know, as if you were admiring various architecture pieces, but now at this point, I'm more focused on: is there anything untoward that you can see, or something unusual, maybe something upturned, or something that's been disturbed, or maybe something that doesn't look obvious to anybody else? But I'm just going into the ground. Yeah. So on the sort of ground level, nothing seems yeah. to be that untoward or or obviously wrong. Um, yeah. No, I'm gonna, if... have a, gonna walk to the back and have a look and see, you know, where the exits are, any doors that lead out of this sort of place, and just. Again, take a look at them, see if anything's been quickly opened, maybe forcibly, or anything that we can see. I know it's going to be a tourist area here, but just to try and get an idea, something's not right. Yeah, you can see like the, like someone's left a door open with a brick, but you're not sure if that's like it could be that suspicious. It could just be yeah, someone trying to sneak out. Um, I'm, I think before I make any kind of moves, I know I've seen both the others, and I think it might be wise that we kind of get together at this point. So I'll. Um, if they not haven't come in, I will wander back out. Whoever's the nearest. As soon to. as you wander back out, you see a lady in this sort of red coat, um, walking around, um, oh. and she's both holding a fish and twirling a magazine. And you know that this is like two very obvious spy recognition symbols. Like she's very, she looks really disturbed. It's obviously uh, Lucia, but she she looks like she's like sweating, uh, and her eyes are like darting around the room. Uh, well, not the room, but the, the outside. Um, is that normally an indication that somebody basically is being observed, and the best thing to do is keep out of the way? You don't know. You like she's always been super cool under pressure. It's like she could disarm right. a nuke and be fine, but she is panicking right now. Um, well, she's I don't not think there's any you. harm. A priest wandering over to see a disturbed child of the flock. I think it's a wise move to go over and put a nurturing arm on her shoulder and quietly get the bible to one hand and then whisper are you okay what's up she like turns at you her pupils like super dilated um and she just goes are the others here i've seen them. maybe we should make our way inside i'm sure they'll notice us i've got a usb it. at my hotel room and then as soon as she starts talking to you like openly um i guess jordan would see uh, just an explosion of red come out the back of her, and then oh. like, like half a Bless second you, later, child. we just <laughs> hear like, a, the crack of the bullet. Um, oh. oh, bless you, my child, for you have died. God. She she sort of hits the floor, oh, and everyone's sort of like looking around, like really that panicked. Would prompt, that I would, would prompt me to appear very shortly after. I would. Uh, I want to play in what the character is good at, so I, I immediately. Um, uh, try to cradle her as she hits the ground and, and look panicked, obviously drop the Bible, but have it by my feet so it, it doesn't open. You know, I want it there. Um, and, and, you know, see if she says anything else. I mean, to be perfectly honest with you, although I will look spooked, I'm still, there's maybe a moment left she says something else. Her hotel room USB, 
can I use Tradecraft maybe to see if I can find out, you know, she's gone, obviously, yeah. um, where so, the hotel was. Has she got a hotel card, any ID, anything I can quickly pocket? She does have a hotel card, although when you pull it out of her pocket, you notice like she's very obviously got key and scratched off the hotel. Um, but she also has a receipt in one of her pockets. You did say you were looking for a receipt. So yes, yeah. you find a receipt for the bar at the Hotel Lancaster. Just very quickly, okay. Halborn, because you all are like resident crack shot. Um, uh, yeah. You can see across the plaza the window that is open um, that you just saw someone's rifle get drawn back from, like they're going to try and run. Okay. Um, what should we say I'm holding? Uh, you, M- M16? Yeah, we'll go with M16. What can you with, a, with a carbine okay. kit. Um, so, yeah, I will take a shot at that. You are going to have to remind me how this works. I did watch the video, but I've been working a lot recently. And I've so, work. you get to spend X amount of points in shooting. So, you've got how much have you got in shooting? 16. So, you can spend however many points in shooting you want uh, to basically enhance that roll. So, you're going to roll 1d6 and then add that amount of points that you want to spend. Oh, wow. You may be thinking, oh, maybe I can just add a 6 to instantly hit. You can do that. That's fine. Right, okay. Let me um, just real quick move... But uh, normally, if I'm... I remember rightly in this game, normally uh, a four is normally a success, isn't it? Yes. However, right. because he's yeah. like shooting across a plaza, uh, yeah, these yeah, guys like yeah, in yeah. darkness, yeah. we're going to want like yeah. maybe a, like a five at least. So you're um, going to have to add some points to be sure. Yeah, you... no problem. And remind me, um, points replenish or points don't replenish? They do replenish they will eventually. if you get to your safety or we get to sort of the end of this episode, essentially. Like, when Got you've, it, you've okay. figured out what's going on in my land, you'll, you'll get them back. Um, I want... I've made a terrible oh. third-rate vicar so far. My first person in my flock has died. <laughs> <laughs> okay, which dice pass are, which dice pot are we using? Dice pasta. I think that's, that's about the right. <laughs> I think that's right. <laughs> The dice oh, yes. can I can I throw down a dice and then choose to add, or do I have to choose to add and then throw a dice? Um, I think you, you choose to add first. You, you choose have to, to add choose first. To add, yeah. yeah. Okay, Your I'll skill is really good. If you've got sixteen, you might as well throw four at it, and then you're pretty virtually. Yeah, I was, was going to say I'll throw, let's throw down four. And then with a hope, with a bit of luck, hopefully that'll be enough to counter any negatives from distance. And if you're not sure, add five. five. What'd you get? Oh, nine altogether. Yeah, so we see the shot ring out. Um, Oh, okay, I see how that works. And you're firing an M16, right? Yeah. I wasn't expecting this gunfire. Yeah, so you've not got a suppressor (laughs) on it because you didn't really have time to add it. So you're just like returning fire through the window. Um, I guess you're on like burst. Like a few of them hit the top of the door and then like obviously like more of them as you sort of like are able to steady your aim and range it in go straight through the door um you see some claret like spill out of the of the door fr- of the window frame even um but you're not sure if you've got like a kill confirmed because it's so dark through the window you can't even tell like what's really in there you were just kind of returning fire at, at the, sort would, of the window after that i would head for the nearest door to that and go up can yep. i go with as well can i see the building he's shooting at and head that way yeah you can both sort of bolt at the same time Right. Am I in a position where I know where they're heading? Because that's quite important at the moment. Given you can see that. you can see them running in the same direction because you you spotted right. them earlier in the crowd. Given the situation I'm in, there's a lot of people who are probably ducking for cover. I suspect, yeah, at this point, yeah, the second shot's going to. I would grab up my Bible and bag, and I would run for the nearest piece of cover to blend in with the crowd. And I think that's probably the statue that you described at the beginning. Is that would that be fair to say? Yeah, you can you can you can get behind it. Yeah, get behind the statue, and then if I'm ducked down, slip out the dock collar, and um, yeah, I'm then going to make my way through the crowd to where they're heading. I'm going to be behind them by a little bit of a distance, but that just suits me fine. Are you taking the gun out of the Bible, or are you... And I'm going to just keep the Bible in my hand at this moment in time. It's less threatening to those that are coming at you, initially. So... It depends uh, on how atheist they are. (laughs) <laughs> yeah maybe that, that you know i've just i've just witnessed my first <laughs> first first calling as a vicar very well done excellent i hadn't got time to administer oh, the last very... rites but i was prepared it yeah, went very out. well <laughs> yes so uh, as yeah. who is the fastest person here 
That is a very good question. How do we determine it? I need to know. Yeah, but your athletics, that's probably your oh, easiest. My yeah, athletic score is eight. No. <laughs> what <laughs> is yours? I haven't what is yours, mate? In, haven't specced into athletics. It's just between you two, because I'm moving much slower than you two. So it's just, yeah, yeah, just well, I'm, I'm def I am eight in athletics, so. That's very good. I'm deliberately yep. looking like a member of the crowd rather than a, a nutter with a gun running across the crowd. Right. You know, you know in the background, because we've apparently worked together on some things in the past, or at least maybe it's a few years ago, that Mace is actually similar to yourself, quite athletic, but he has really unusual kind of parkour kind of skills where he can jump, tumble, that kind yeah. of thing, if it was required. I think we're the, I'm the same. Leo is okay. much the same, so I guess they would have almost done, they could have very Probably well done training like that That would together. make a lot of sense why they weren't together before. Yeah. For some but reason, I'm nice much crap. slower for obvious reasons because I'm behind you and I'm, I'm a good 30 seconds or so behind anything you're doing. Right, so who would like to roll the first dice to pursue? I assume, Jordan, you want to do that. So, I guess so. can you spend however many points in athletics to try and catch up with our, our, our friend here? Cool, I'm going to go for four as well. Let's go with. Excellent. You should have every opportunity to catch him, I would think. There we go. That's a nine as well. Brilliant. Well, four. It's a five roll plus four, so. Excellent. Well, a nine. I don't think they're really going to be able to get away, but the enemies get a roll on this, thankfully. Right, so you're now pursuing him. So you run up the stairs, and as you run up the stairs, you see the opposite window has been smashed out and someone's dived out of it. Um, but cool. we'll see how far away they get. They're just going to spend the like, one. How many floors was they up? Oh, jeez. Right, uh, so what happens is, as you sort of get to the top of the stairs and you see this person is smashed through that window, um, what we see is that they um, have, like, injured themselves, like, coming out of the window and they're shot, and they're kind of, like, trying to limp away, and it would be very easy for you to just, like, jump out and, like, grab them. Um, on, yeah. how, many, how, many, how many floors up was the shooter? Uh, it was, like, one. It was... They were on the, the second floor of the building, like ground floor, first floor, essentially. Right, got you. Yeah, so can I can I get out, like, I mean, with the, I think with the cherry and athletics, you can parkour, so can I do that out the building down to them and just... Yeah, you sort of jump out the window and do one of those, like, sense. awesome parkour rolls, and you're able to, like, just swipe their feet as you do it. Oh, that's um, so cool. They've got, like, a, a sniper rifle, like, strapped to their back and, like, a gunshot, like, sort of in their, like, abdomen, uh, and they're, like, profusely breathing from it. Um, I think I can just, from where I am, I think I can just shoulder barge them from behind and send them sprawling into some bins or something, I guess. Yeah, yeah, we I see we see just... them, like, sprawl into some bins. We see all the bin bags go everywhere, like, with banana peels all over the floor. Um, and this guy, he's, he's sort of, like, he's got a shaved head and, like, a tribal tattoo going down one side of his head. Um, and he looks, like, obviously, like, a rough, like, thug-like character. Um, he's got, like, cauliflower. One of his ears is a cauliflower ear. Uh, and like his nose has very clearly been broken like a few times. Uh, the gun like flies out of his hand, uh, like the opposite direction to him as you've like pushed him over, uh, and he's now like laid like mm -hmm. sprawled out on the on the sort of cobbles. Excellent. I'd like to grab him by the throat so he can't call out, and then just look at him in the face and just go, "Where do you think you're going, sunshine?" It's just a job. Come on, man. Right. Who said who sent you to do this job? Um, he like, his he, he obviously is like about to try and attack you, uh, but you, you see that he's like, he's got like fear in his eyes because he just got shot seemingly by no one. Um, I so really you would you're, not do you that can, if I were you. What was that? I really would not do that if I were you. Okay, I, what what do you need to know? Well, I need to know who hired you to do this job, don't I? Don't, no, 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 you can't, no names, like, you can't know that. What? Oh, are you scared of what they'll do to you? Yes. I think you should be more scared about what I'm going to do to you. Do you want to... You don't tell me. Do you want to spend any points right now? Let me, let me know. I, mean, I, have, one, I have one in intimidation and interrogation, so... What would you like to spend? Interrogation I mean, or intimidation? I... Either of those is let's go with it. Let's go with intimidation. Yeah, so... I'll be my one. I can still use that skill in future, can't I? I just now don't have the one to spend. Yes. Correct. Yeah. 
You, uh, like, that wasn't a spend. I was just saying if you were like if you. Oh right, point. sorry. Yeah, yeah. Should have made that more. Yeah, obvious. I have that skill, so I can do the thing with intimidation. So basically, like as you're grabbing him, you like lean on his gunshot wound, uh, and he sputters up a little bit of blood, and he's like. Her name is Dominic Harper, and then you just see like his eye like twitch back in the back of his head, like snap back after mentioning Dominic Harper. His his eye snaps back, uh, and you just like feel like all of his muscles like tense up for a second, and then like very slowly like sort of depress, uh, and he's just like now dead like in your arms um, after saying this this name. Cool. I suppose I walk up. Is, that, for, is that something that would be familiar to? Leo, or can I mean, you take a I... either a point of stability or a point of uh, what's the other one? Stability or I'm blanking. Else is the other one, so I guess it would be stability. Yeah, take a stability point, please. A cool. point of stability. Damage. I suppose I should. I suppose I should walk up at this point and go. Oh, what did you do? Why is he dead? You're so when you walk up, it's I pretty see. gruesome. He's like holding his throat and leaning on his gunshot wound, but one of his eyes is like staring dead at uh, Leo, but the other eye is like fully rolled back. Um, I kind of, I kind of poke the, poke the side of his head with a gun. I said, "What did you do? It's uh, I've never seen this before." Yes, I mean, he, he went into the bins. And then this happened. He did give us a name, you though. Mean the, bins, the bins did this. These to bins. Him? That's These impressive. bins. No. Why would bins do this to someone? I don't know. You ask. You tell me. You do. You put I, him into the bins. That's not. What did he tell you? God, what kind of weed are you smoking these days, son? Give us a I name. That's the important weed. thing. What was the name? Oh, yeah. Yes, Dominic Harper, female. Uh, that was the only thing he gave us. That was the only thing that happened before. Anyone got forensics? Again, um, I have foren I have forensic pathology. Forensic pathology. Yes. Okay. Would Can you I like just to give you, them? if it's possible, just to tell you what I'm doing because yep. I'm well behind at this point. Just yep, so it thing, just no ties ties it up for you. Um, obviously, I got to the statue for color and uh, pulled out the dog collar and hidden it back on myself. Uh, mm -hmm. Picked up my Bible in my hand. I've tried to move for away at speed. Obviously, there are many people running probably at this point. Um, I know where they've headed. Um, but I don't initially head that direction. It's, it's just to give a little bit of cover that I run that direction and then I dart back across. But once I've kind of reached, I know that I don't know where they've gone. I'm certainly not going in through the back. I would I would go round the back of this this building, hoping maybe to find a trail of destruction or maybe find them. Maybe as, as you're sort of circling round, you can start hearing like police sirens in the distance. Right. My focus at this point is this is what you would he would do. He would pause. He pulls out of his pocket. A, um, a photo, uh, he unravels it, he looks at it, only he sees it. Um, out of when the players are not available, I'll tell you out of shot what that actually is. Yep. He looks at it momentarily, thinks back to Londonderry, um, a particular scene in Londonderry where can uh, we, somebody... Yeah. Can you describe real quick, as the camera sort of pans around you, what the photograph looks like, not necessarily who it the is, woman, but what it looks like? It's a, a young lady uh, in her, her late 20s with three very beautiful children. In it, uh, ages somewhere sort of seven, five, and three, that kind of sort of look to it. They're clearly in some sort of the picture where they're silhouetted against is kind of a seaside, it was like a seaside kind of location of some kind. Uh, but it's not clear from the picture what where that is. Um, and he he takes a moment to stare at that picture before folding it back up and putting it back in his pocket. Then, having recovered, he then starts moving around the side of the building, um, slightly more with more urgency now, particularly with the sirens coming. Yeah, you can all sort of hear these sirens going. Would you like to spend, sorry Jordan, would you like to spend that point in forensics? So it's, when you say would I like to spend it, was it would I like to use the skill? This, will be, this will be a spend, uh, because right. there is so something... Complete... Yeah, I'll spend this, because I think this is important. Yeah, it probably makes sense because the urgency of police sirens and various other things, and you you know you haven't got time to mess about now, probably. Yeah. So as the sirens are sort of gl glowing closer, and I guess like everyone else is sort of like looking at you, like where are we gonna go? Uh, you notice that like the sort of vein pattern on his eyeball is super weird, um, and as you're like looking at it, uh, it's almost like a perfect sort of like glyph. So it's like a circle with like a triangle. Uh, but the oh. triangle sort of doesn't join up with the last point. It shoots like directly up. 
Um, and it's like that's been made like in the veins of his eye at the back, and th- there's no reason for that to ever like so naturally is... occur. I will use this, the could this be an implant? Feature. I'll use the macro feature on the borrowed camera and take a picture of it so that we've got a record. Okay. Yeah. As I move is this my way an implant around. of some sort, or is it just has he been altered in any way? But from what you can see, the veins look like they're naturally occurring. But that is not a pattern that naturally occurs. Like it's it's so per like the circle is so perfect that like no way the the body would like naturally make it that perfect. So these are the veins around his eye, you said. Like on on the back, like so you know his eye, like on his eyeball. Yeah, yeah, like all like almost on like on the back of the eyeball, sort of. Right. Sorry, I'm just making sure I get that. Uh, I'll flick back into the American accent now because we're getting back into. Uh... You know, we're, there's no point trying to pretend to be some sort of vicar that we're not. So I, I make my way around the side of the, the, the building as quickly as possible. But as I do, I have a look at this receipt to see which hotel it is and wonder if my basic, very travel map kind of thing. I know Milan a little bit, been there a few times, but it's mostly I know that a little bit like Barcelona, most of the roads kind of run down. And that's how you kind of work your way out where you are. But just to sort of get engaged where this how far away this hotel is. Um, from you, let me check Google Maps. Uh, the Hotel okay. Lancaster, um, <laughs> I don't think he's that far away from where you actually are. Because uh, uh, I just want to have that in my mind as I try and hopefully uh, can find them again. Um, I know that we've probably contacted each other using burner phones in the past. I am prepared to use one, but under the at the moment I'm hoping I can find them rather than having to use a burner phone because I, I wouldn't have a spare one. Yeah, you, can, one this. you can definitely find them, like... Fine. And did you not follow us into the alleyway? Uh, I have now, yeah. Uh, yeah uh, he's, he's sort of come around the buildings. On... <laughs> so, as, are you, as he co- can I say, as he, as you come around the building, I'm like there over a dead body, and I just look at you and go, it's, it's not what it looks like. <laughs> it's no, all right. I was just exactly standing. Uh, uh, like. uh, I was, I was just standing next to one woman, and she died. So uh, don't worry Oof. about it, honestly. Uh, you, you need to, you need to stop making a habit of that, Mace. <laughs> women are dying are you, are you pointing out the um the eye glyph thing so right. um well yeah I, I, well, I mean you've noticed it as well because you photographed okay. it so i'll mention it to mace and say that's yeah, great that's, that's not that's not supposed to be there yeah. that's just what we maybe, need to maybe, see maybe, um goddamn take it with us and uh we should we should <laughs> take, take it for illumination <laughs> uh i put my bag hmm. down and I, I get out of camping spirit uh, uh, oh my god for just a moment uh, I, I think I, sort of I, I usher Mace away and go, it's uh, probably best to just let him do it. Ben, um, <laughs> I, I have to at this point agree here. With, I, I turn away as soon as he gets a spoon out. That's enough. <laughs> so so just, what the actual... You and me just... <laughs> what the actual camera sees is like you two turning away and like looking at each other and then we just hear like from the background like... <laughs> Like a squelch. Yeah, like a Can suit. we have like a, a just a casual <laughs> conversation? So so how's things? How's have you been? <laughs> so as we're been, hitting been, the scooping noise, we're just having a catch up. I was doing fine, he says. I was doing, you were doing I'm, I'm glad. Still, I was doing perfectly fine, so this all happened and now look at us. This is a hell of a day. Hey, listen, uh, that lady she had this seat on her to this hotel yeah. Lancaster. Oh, this is where we need to get to. She mentioned something about a USB. I think we need to get right. there pretty quick. So let's get, get our dear there. friend um, I can get obviously building his own soup. Uh, let's get. Let's go and have a little. See if we can get there before whoever's after this woman realizes what's yeah. up. So you've dug so, out this eyeball um, with some of like the optical like nerve. Uh, yeah. Where are you putting that? Backpack. <laughs> just Probably throw it in. Just, yeah, no, just throw it's it in. That's it. it. Why don't watch. you? Why don't you put it in um, your luggage? You can keep an eye on it then. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, but what 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 you'll actually see is when while you're having the conversation, you'll hear the scoop and the pop. You'll hear ruffling in the bag. You'll hear a few clicks, um, and maybe a zip go, and then you'll hear a thump. Um, and oh. I say we should. Uh, and I walk past you in a different different outfit, and uh, same bag, different outfit. And we should uh, we should probably go. And you look back, and there's a burning bin. Okay. Cool. 
Uh, is the body still there? Probably leave. If this is, if uh, we, is there multiple ways out of this back of this building? Is there a few other avenue, alleys that we can follow out away from this scene, so or do if, we have to go back into uh, the thoroughfare? Um, can I just say to just on that note at the back of the building? And when I was saying earlier, obviously before the cathedral, I would have scouted out the surrounding area. Would I have come across the hotel? I don't mean like the immediate around the. I mean like the actual, a good. Yeah, kind okay. of a square mile radius from around the cathedral. So the Hotel Lancaster is about 31 minute walk. Uh, if you cut through uh, the the park near the castle, we need we need a vehicle. We need to get a taxi. If we if we move if we move away from the area as quickly as possible, um, mm. we'll I'll bow to my friend's knowledge of the area. We we need to get a taxi uh, somewhere away from this scene because there's obviously yeah. going to be a lot of police and stuff. Then cool. uh, make our way there quicker. We can't. We, we can't be dealing with a, a, a fifteen-minute, sixty-minute jog or a thirty-minute walk. Yeah. It's just not worth it. With time is important here. Let's get yeah, there as cool. quickly as possible. Uh, dear I friends, know a place where cut... we, I, I guess I would know a place where we could get a, an easy cab from. Yeah, Lucio Chero has been cut down in a prime. Let's make her death worthwhile. Let's find out what she's doing. She so you could go try and call a taxi, but you would think now that, like, because of all the panic, all of the taxis are in the area of kind of like picked up everyone that was fleeing uh but as you're leaving you do see like these like three like obviously like teenagers bikes uh just sort of leaning up against a wall they'll do they'll do i I don't think there'll be taxis they'll be all running away we should uh they got bike locks on them they don't cool perfect Uh, stolen so one of you is 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 riding obviously like this was like a brother and his two sisters. So one of you is riding like a red bike, one of you is riding a blue bike, and then there's one like bright pink bike. Um, uh, I take the uh, blue bike. Uh, I take the blue bike. I, I, I like the pink biggest, bike. Oldest, I'm going. You, know. you don't even need to fight me for it. I'm going straight for the pink bike. I'm happy. I'm happy to take anything other no than one's the looking bike. at a grown man riding a pink bike. No one's giving him. The I'm <laughs> sorry, Mace Hunter does not ride a pink bike. That's just not happening. That's fine. Yeah, so (laughs) what we see is you guys are, like, dashing through the alleyways on these bikes. um, And we see, like, every time you go, like, through the next alleyway, like, a police car goes, like, through the road behind it. Um, So you manage to, like, just miss everything because you were just quick enough before all the police, like, start shutting down the area. Um, And you, you sort of go... Are you going straight towards the Hotel Lancaster, or are you sort of... I think I think we haven't got a choice, because time is really important. These people are obviously onto this woman, so they're going to know. So we need yeah. to get there and get in, and we haven't had the time to locate a room, so it's going to need a, a very a good bit of negotiation, at the a bit of flirting at the counter, if possible, or something, to get the information in quickly. That's where I'm probably my best. So if we can get to the hotel, I will... I will take over at that point and try and get the information these guys need so that we can approach this room quickly and let them use their very suitable skills. Right, so... I defer to you. You approach the Hotel Lancaster. Um, It's kind of, like, built into the front of, like, a row of buildings. Um, It's got this sort of of stone brick in... um, this stone brick exterior with, like, these big bay windows. uh, These massive, sort of, I think they're like oak or, or walnut doors um, that say Hotel Lancaster and then like a big Lancaster rose above every single one of the windows. Um, and now, got like... the part I did take, uh, if you remember, I also took as well as a, re- a receipt, I also took anything that I could kind of get in terms of ID. What's, what's she currently going under as an alias? Um, Is it her, the, the name Lucio Cherry? Yeah. It's right. it, like, it, you, um, you also think it might be her original passport. But what I'm looking to have is the Lancaster. Is it a a, a sizable hotel, presumably because it's in the middle of Milan? It's quite uh, plush. It's you know, it's good... plush, but I don't think it's like 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 I don't think it's colossal. It's very tall, but yeah. it's not very wide. But so there are quite a few people at the reception area in working the various customers. Yeah, there. yeah. There's like yeah. a you see there's I'm a really, hotel bar in the back. And what I'm looking to do is as we enter, I'm not too worried about what they do. They, they'll probably just let me go about doing what I do best. And so what I'll do is. My initial reaction is to walk in. If there's a paper that's near the... I will pick the paper up and put it under my arm. I shall wander in. I'm looking for a couple that are checking out, and I want to listen in to who's checking out. I need to get their name. As soon as I've got their name, I'm going to go to the furthest away reception area, wait for them to check out. As soon as they've gone, I'm then going to go up to the receptionist, take a gamble, because it is a gamble, repeat the person's name and say, I've just checked out. I'm actually looking to stay an extra couple of nights. I know it's an inconvenience. Can you sort this out for me and my wife, if that's the case? Or 
Of course, Mr. Fildago, we can we we can let you back into your room. Uh, fabulous, fabulous. Uh, that is uh, perfect. Uh, I I I would love that. Another couple of nights for me and my darling wife. Uh, I'm sorry, it's uh, business. So you know how these things go. Now, I was going to meet my dear friend here. I believe she's already staying, Lucio Cherry. I've been here a few days already, as you know. So, is it possible you could just tell me what room Lucio is in? Oh yeah, uh, of course. Uh, Room... I'll make sure, like I, I have always done, but you know, we, we tip very well. I, I go in and probably get out a hundred. Uh, I think it's just euro now, isn't it? Hundred euro. You're, you're yeah. very generous. Yes, uh, your other uh, your, your other friends are already up there. Uh, room five hundred five. I thought they might be. Thank you very much. I shall look forward to our uh, our rendezvous. Thank you. See you another time. No, thank you very much, sir. Enjoy your stay. I will. Thank you. And then I relay the information to them. And then um, let them take the lead. Um, and then I kind of, yeah, I've got my Bible to hand. This could come in handy. Cool. Let's go there I... quite quickly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I will lead the way. Um, Others. Is there a camera in the lift? Um, is there it probably a, is. There's cameras sort of like all over the hotel. Um, oh, there's cameras all over the hotel, sure. But is there a camera in the lift specifically? Yes. Bugger. Um... Okay, in that case, on the floor we're going to, can I find a blind spot? Um, on the floor you're going to, yeah. I mean, you could you could hide around the corner or, or whatever from the from the room. Blind, blind spot in the camera system, yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. There's like I'll just roll out with a gun. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You 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 look at all the cameras and think if you like push yourself up against this person's wall, you can you can take out a gun. Okay. Well, there's going to be a silenced, um, silenced, silenced pistol this time that I will keep sort of under jacket. Mm -hmm. But ready I, to go. I have my preferred weapon, which I'm hoping I, I'll take whatever was provided for by my contact Luigi at uh, uh, Severoni. But I'll uh, whatever it might be. I presume it's just a small pistol of some yeah. kind uh, with the number scrubbed off. Yeah, definitely. Like Fine. Okay. This, this thing looks that like it's been through the ringer to take off all the serial numbers. <laughs> yeah, um, that will it will be loud, uh, but frankly. Um, under the circumstances, who cares? It's it's going to be needed. Um, I let them take the lead for obvious reasons because this is, you know, they, they, he is clearly our dear friend here, um, ready for this. Whereas I'm more, I can crack off a couple of shots, but yeah, he's going to be uh, to spray the area I fairly effectively. I have a plan. Take out a throwing knife and hold that in the other hand, ready. Yeah, that's oh, fine. I love it. God, he is ready, isn't he? I have a plan, Hold gents. Up. So we know the room number that she's staying in. She's, we've just been told. I suggest we go into the room next door and try and have a listen through the wall. I think I have a microphone of some sort that we could enhance the sound and listen. If in. you if you start to approach the room, that you, um, you notice that the door has very obviously been kicked in. Right. Uh, I, I ignore I'd your still... plan and go full in ready. Um, gently tap the door open with a silencer. Well, that was rude. No okay. I'll sit down at this point. I'll find a chair in the hallway and just sit down, sort of like this. And nice... You know, it's like a half burnt cigar, like waiting in the ashtray for you if you want to pick that up and smoke it. But uh, yeah, you sort of sit. You're like, maybe we could go. And then he like barges maybe... past okay. you with his gun. Okay. Okay. Like, I just get that boy. Yeah, I just. You let me know when you're done. So you're just, you're just barging in. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm gonna go in. Uh, I'll be there. You'll be two veg kind of guys. Standard, standard sweep and cover, um, because the door's obviously been barged in. Do you so there's kick no point in the trying door, to do... or do you want to give me an alert? No, roll? no, I will gently use the tip of the gun to just push the door open. <laughs> James, would you like to give me an? Uh, I think it's alertness I'm looking for. Oh, it's alertness. Bye bye. Uh, is that a is that a general ability? Yeah, it should be a general ability. No, I don't think I've not got it down as a general. Alertness modifier. I don't think that's a general ability, Ben. I think that's a different thing. Am I going mad? It doesn't come under the normal Maybe. ability. Maybe. I might be just going mad. I don't have alert on my sheet, but it doesn't. doesn't I have alertness modifiers on some of my sense, enemies. There I is sense it's... trouble. If that sense happens. trouble. Sorry, that's what I'm going for. Sense trouble. Can you give me a sense uh, trouble roll? You can spend yeah. however many points you want. Sense trouble. I have two points in sense trouble, so I'll spend. Uh, I need a five. Eight points. You might as well use them. Yeah, right. 
Uh, alertness is based on is applied to your base infiltration difficulty. Uh, that's an alertness modifier. Two, three. Uh, fuck. Three. <laughs> okay, fun. so what we see is you push very closely into the door. Do you want to be the first through the door, or do you he want is. to not get hit? He is well, the first I through the I, door. I said I was going to be first through the door. No, sorry. Do you, want to, do you want to be in the room, or do you want to not get hit? Well, not get hit would be nice, but I did say I would door open, and then go in and do so a sweep. As so, you're, as you're sweeping through with your pistol, you hear like a like a click, uh, and look down, and there's a grenade like set up like a booby trap at the door. <laughs> okay. So do you want to... I have good explosive devices. Can I apply this here? I will, if you've got three points, I'll let you try and disarm it. I got eight points. So you got eight points. Yeah. Okay, give me the give me the roll. I'm gonna need because you're like literally you've all you're very close to pulling the pin out, so you're gonna need to be very careful. I'm gonna need like a like a six, at least. Can I see all this from my seat across the hall? You you heard the like the the mechanical click, and you can see God, him like I'm stopping. So... And like staring at this wow. thing. God, I'm so smug at this point. <laughs> How did oh. that go? I, I say. <laughs> Good chance. I give you a thumbs up from the, down the hall. I spent six on that, didn't I? Was that your roll the six there? Yeah, my roll was 12 total. 12 total? Wow. Right, yeah, is that you. What, is that what the hatch means? Yeah, yeah. Just before yes. the pin yeah. gets like pulled out, uh, you like put your index finger in like the the key ring that's like pulling the pin, uh, and manage to like snap the wire, uh, that was gonna pull the pin out, and like really carefully put the pin back in the grenade before you like push the door open and see the rooms in disarray, and you can see someone like pulling open the pillows, and like another guy is like smashing vases on the floor like they're being so loud that they didn't hear your little quick yeah, oh, okay. fuck moment with a grenade okay can i kneecap them one each uh you can yeah. you can kneecap either the guy smashing the vase or the the other guy but then they're gonna like turn so which which one is facing me no none of them are facing you they're both facing away okay uh, which one is nearest the nearest is the guy that was smashing a vase Okay. In that case, I will use the throwing knife, uh, and I will aim at his leg. Okay. Yeah. Well, he's not paying any attention, so you don't actually have to roll for that. Uh, you're just able to oh, okay. dig the throwing knife into this guy's leg. He, like, falls onto one knee. Uh, he, like, t goes to turn around, and he's, like, obviously, like, reaching for a weapon. Are you going to call your, your, your companions in at this point, or are you just going to... Uh, I will... I mean, uh... probably hear the scream. Yeah. yeah. Ah! I will... <laughs> I will spare... Spend... knife thrust into your leg. I will spend four in athletics to use this cherry where I can move in and, and, and literally tumble in hand-to-hand -hand style, landing in front of him, knife in hand, mm -hmm. and I'm going to put the knives... I'm not going to wait for any kind of reaction straight in under the jawline, is the plan. Yeah, so we see, like, uh, we see how throw this off. knife and then straight away, like, mid-air of that knife as the guy dips down, uh, we see Mace, like, combat roll in and jab the the knife into the guy who's just taken the knife to the leg. So he's he's out. And now his friend is like clearly like fumbling with uh with like a gun holster and you can that kind of see these guys are very unprofessional. Uh and he's fumbling for a gun holster, he pulls it out and he's gonna aim straight at Mace because he's the closest guy. That's fine. I'm, I I I this is this is where I I like this kind of stuff. So um, any chance of a shot before he gets one off? Uh no, because you've just thrown the knife, so it's going to take you a second to just pull out your pistol. Uh, I had one in one and one in the other. So it was knife and gun. I will let you spend two points in athletics to do that. I have no points in athletics. Carry on. It's fine. I don't think your 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 hit threshold is going to be nothing but nothing lower than two anyway. Yeah, he like clearly fumbles uh, and then like puts one like in the ceiling and then like tries to aim at you and like fires another one past. Uh, Hjorborn's head. Uh, so now it's your guys. You can see, see this guy is very clearly like incompetent. Like he's never really discharged a weapon before. I take a, few, take a few steps into the room and hit him with the back end of the gun. 
I simultaneously at this point just move in and shut the door so that we're like, there's nothing so you're there's no possible witness so we're okay I, I check that there's no one in the corridor like come out to actually like see anything yeah or oh yeah these two rounds to this. were they silenced they were you not was... silenced so oh, yeah as first <laughs> i guess the question i should ask him is has anybody come out no one has come out like right now <laughs> Uh, yeah, not yet. Is the answer you're looking not yet. For. Essentially, yeah, yeah. not yet. Cool. Like, so that, yeah, I am going to go and just shut the door then. In the room, the, so we're all in the room. Has the um, what our dear friend um, Halbion uh, has that been successful at knocking this guy to the ground? Yeah, he just walks in and like what, butts him with a gun. What floor? Like, what floor are we on? Uh, what room? Was it room 505? It was room 505, so it's the fifth floor. I, um, I calmly walk over yeah. to wherever there's a phone in the room, and I yeah. ring down the reception. Hello? This is room 505. Um, there's been some fireworks going off quite close to the outside of the hotel. It's disturbing my wife. I wonder if you could take a look into that, please. Thank you. Oh, we are sorry, uh, Miss Cello. We will, uh, we, will, we will go look into that straight away. We will... Yeah, and that yeah. might buy us a few minutes, but that's I'll, uh, I'll I'll call the police. Make sure they uh, make sure they get to disperse whoever yeah. it is. Yeah. I think it's around the back of the hotel. I saw some young vandals running off. Ah, the young people. What can we do? He says. Uh, and he, On and bikes. One of them had a pink bike. I think I laid that then. Yeah, you. you prints are on those. <laughs> that doesn't matter. You you you, you don't even worry about that kind of stuff. That's I'll not going to tie with it. Right, yeah, so now you're in the room with two, with a corpse and a, a knocked-out thug uh, in this totally trashed room. I'm more interested in looking around the room. We've got to think in, in her kind of way. Um, she was dressed in she was dressed in red, wasn't she, when yeah. we, we were going to meet her? She looked perturbed. She said she had a USB. Um, a magazine. Yeah. Um, I'll go and have a. I'll look around the kitchen area. You know, maybe they've got a drinks cabinet, that kind of thing. I'll look in like the ice tray. I'll look in that kind of area to start with. So I'll have a sort of initial type, sort of search around there. So uh, you look um, in the mini bar. It looks like super untouched. Like she's not. She's not taken anything out of there. Like no tea or coffee or anything. I, I was looking for something maybe turned back to front or just something obvious. I don't want. I'll reclose the door. I'll just start sweeping around the room. You do know a uh, like a glass that's like very clearly like from the bar, uh, like. On the on the side. Okay, uh, where would that have come from? Because that's where I'm going to go to. So, so there's a hotel bar from. underneath called the hallway. Oh, that bar. I'll go. Oh, okay, so maybe maybe she hit it downstairs. It's possible, uh, but we should still search the room. So um, we should put a little bit of effort in, but we won't have long. Um, anybody got anything particular? Will... They're good at this. Would it be? Um... I will reacquire that grenade that was by the door. Yeah, you because you can take that grenade. That's fine. Oh. Yeah, can I interrogate uh, the hell out of the um, alive guy? Yeah, I guess you've got like yeah. smelling salts or something on him to like get him up. Uh, yeah, I mean, we've also got a bathtub, a shower, and a towel. That'll do. Oh, Jesus, you're going to waterboard him. Wait. Well, we haven't got any diesel, no. so, you know, it has to be not water. We're going to have to be quite quick. We're going to have to be quite quick, my friends, because the authorities, it's not going to be long before somebody reports something more sinister, so we, ha we can't hang around. Trust me, I don't need any of that shape. I got this. Yeah, the guy oh, looks like, like very clearly you scared, you um, and he's like not a hardened professional. At all. He's like, I was just paid to to search the room, sir. Please, please, please. I don't need. Please, don't kill me. What were oh, you looking God, for, there, Leo? You killed the last. I'm not going to kill this one. I don't know. He had his eyes in four different directions. It's not. Uh, it's. Not oh God! It's true. He says. I, I turn to him and say, oh, what is true? Um, I can't, I can't tell you. I can't tell you anything. You could tell us what you were looking for. Um, uh, he's like very clearly slowly. like thinking in his mind. Uh, like what he almost seems to slowly back him up to the balcony. He's like, no, I, I, I'll tell you, I just need a different word. Um, I, uh, could you write it down maybe? Uh, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Give, give, give me a piece of paper. Uh, he, he, like, 
it's like he's trying to write with a hotel pen and then like it's obviously one of those crappy hotel pens that doesn't like work straight away so he's like scribbling at the top and trying to get this thing to work Mace, do you do have a pen for this gentleman to write his no, no, get him a pen out of my pocket for him. <laughs> yeah you fish out a pen you, i guess it's like a fountain pen Thank like you. writes wonderfully Fount- he's like, well i've got a pen a pencil the russians say it best when they say that a pencil is better than a pen because it writes in all conditions which is absolutely true but the lead filings will go into your electronics if you're in the uh, in the space, yeah. right? So uh, in space, if they're not good. he very quickly writes something and then he shows you it, uh, and it's like a perfect circle uh, with like a triangle that doesn't join up at the end that shoots up. This interesting. Um, what is this? Who, 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 where does this come from? He's like, you know, for um, for uh, laptop. Right this. Down. Write it down if you can't say it. This no for laptop. For, we have no time for sacred geometry. Oh, give us the answer. What laptop. do you mean geometry? It's for laptop. And he's like looking at it and he looks at you confused. He's like, for laptop. Great. Where That's does this good. guy hail from? What's his accent? Uh, he's he's Italian, but I've got a bad uh, I've got a bad Italian. No, that's fine. <laughs> can I speak to him? Can I speak to him in Italian to make more sense of it? Yeah, he says he says again. This for putting in a laptop. Like you, you put it in this. You put it in the laptop, uh, and then he's like, "Wait, you're not get." Uh, and then like you see him draw like some other things, and he he's draws looking, the exact he's same. He's looking for the USB port to put in the laptop. Uh, he draws some other things, and he's like, "This," and it looks like he's tried to like make a sentence, but it is just this same glyph repeated. Okay, um, I saw, I say to him in Italian, then uh, is it. Uh, recognizing when you when you use the laptop, it you plug it into laptop. You you plug it into the laptop. He lo- he's like very clearly like exacerbated, and he's like he keeps he keeps writing the same explain thing. Explain a little bit more of what he means by plug it into the laptop. Is that so um, you can access the iCloud? Oof, oof. Just for us. It's not throwing wow. anything. <laughs> He keeps... I will give you a, I will give you a round of applause for that, Sean. That was very good. Like, oh dear! Every time he writes, it seems to be the same perfect, like literally perfect. Like you, you've never seen someone draw a perfect circle like this repeatedly. Dead circle. Uh, I will get out of my bag the eye and hold it up to him and say, uh, "How do we put this in?" Up? It, it, uh... it, like as soon as you get out the eye, he looks like disgusted. Um... And he's like, what the hell is that? Then do we not put this in a laptop? No, you put this in the, and he points at the thing. <laughs> Holding this it is, on, getting, you put this in this the is getting us nowhere, Halbjorn. This is getting us absolutely well, nowhere. But it's getting us further than you did because he's not dead. We need, to, we need to keep our search around the room. Now, you mentioned about this glass. Could you go back and just explain that one more time? What this yeah, glass so it's from? like very obviously like a uh, like a glass from the, the hotel bar. Like it's got the, the hallway bar like frosted on it. And uh, it was clearly full of some kind of like strawberry daiquiri or some, some kind of fruity cocktail sort of, of thing. Uh, and she's very clearly right, brought I... it up from the hotel bar. Okay, I, I think that's the but there's there's a reason for that, and it's more important than this crap. So I what I'll do is I'm just gonna say to Leo, look, I'm gonna go downstairs because I think there might be an opportunity to see whether this is connected downstairs. I'm not gonna yeah. use the lift that we came up in. I'm gonna take the back stairs down. Yeah, yeah. you managed that, to get I, that's fine. As 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 you leave I say, okay, you, you, you look at that, you, you let us know. Um I'll meet you downstairs the... in the lobby. As you're, look- okay. as you're looking around, you notice that there's a lot of CCTV. So, like, if you could get the tapes, you could figure out exactly, like, her movements, maybe? Yeah, um, I'm um, kind of thinking that we're going to need them anyway. Um, so it might be a good move again to go um, uh, to the reception area. Um, start Go to reception first. Um, I look like I've come de- from upstairs anyway, so that's good. And try to get the attention of... Mr. Uh, Fundagallo, more... how's your room? It has been fantastic, of course. It is the it is what you always do here. You make my stay uh, so fabulous. You're too kind. Um, look, I'm, I've decided that I, I may actually want to uh, invest in this hotel. So I was wondering, look, I haven't got a lot of time. As you know, I've booked a hotel, but I've got guests and I'm meeting. Uh, in fact, I'm already uh, conducting some 
eye to eye investigations um, with them now. But I, I need to, um, if it's possible, is, it, is there any chance I might have a, uh, a very quick look around the facilities that you have? I don't want to see too much. Just a few things around the hotel, how you operate behind the scene. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, of course, of course. He, he like, gestures you to come, like, behind 100 him. euros. I'll t- give him straight away if he's being cooperative. Um, and then I say, look, my... Let's see how good you are, your security is. Show me your security room. If he if he divers that he's worried about, say, look, it, it's me. I'm here at the hotel. Listen, between me and you, let's see how this security, how Would good you like are you? To spend like spend some points. Yeah, I think for this one, um, it's either flirting or flattery, isn't it? I think I think <laughs> it, we'll count the flirting as flattery because it kind of makes sense. It's my sort of uh, forte. Um, I'm just trying to figure out where that is. I did see it earlier. Where is that? Uh, uh, personal uh, abilities. Uh, oh, yes, right. Yes, of course. This is one of my... I'll use two points if somebody would kindly roll it for me. It's all I've got in it. Two you, points You of, don't need to uh, roll. You can just spend... It's uh, academic ability, I think, right? Yeah. It's interpersonal flattery. So. Yeah, yeah, you can just spend yeah, the two flattery points. Flattery and flirting are interpersonal. I, I will say to him that, that I've got connections within the hotel chain. I'm going to say to him, look, you've been very helpful to me. If I can just see the security room just for two minutes, if I give you just one person, show me how well this, this equipment all operates... I had my guests, my friends stay here yesterday to describe the woman. She would have been in the hotel bar last night. She ordered a certain drink. Show me her movement. Show me that you have good security in all places. And I'll tell you what, I'll give you 500 euros. Prove to me that you're as good as I think this hotel is. He's like, he thinks for a second and he's like, I see no harm. You you came to meet the lady. Uh, uh, please come back. And you and he takes you to this like bank of CCTV monitors that they've got sort of in the the staff employee area. And he's if, like, they, if they've got some staff in their security officers, um, flashing money to them is not going to be a good thing. But to him, it's fine. But to them, I'm just going to come in as if um, I'm supposed to be there. So yeah, I'm going to act very confident. There's essentially just like one security guard like checking the cameras, and the rest of them you think are just like. Oh, no, I say thank around. you, my friend, for showing me to this room. It is fabulous uh, that you've done this for me. Appreciate that. Now, now we've discussed. Uh, oh, sorry, I apologise. I look at the security guard. I say, um, would you mind to explain to him why I need you to do for me? Yeah, they, they really quickly like converse with each other in Spanish, and, and the security guard goes. I can speak Spanish, so I'm just making sure it is what he says it is. Yeah, he's 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 just very quickly just explaining like this is this this guy's going to invest in our hotel. Like, uh, he yep. just wants to see like the security is tip top, so he can conduct some more business here. Uh, and the guy seems like kind of like skeptical at first, and then he's kind of like, it's only a, a lobby I, bar. I see no, I see no harm. Uh, of course. Uh, who did you want to see the movements of uh, your your friend? I described the woman. I think it would have been any time last night between sort of seven and eleven. That's my best guess. Um, ah, the one in the hotel been... bar. Yeah. Oh, maybe. maybe... Now, and while he... he's doing, while he's looking for that piece of that tape, I am keeping one eye on that. But at the same time, what I'm looking at is: are there any cameras that connect five oh five, and how are they storing this here? So it's basically just like big rolls of magnetic tape. It's like kind of an old system. Uh, they've just Absolutely. like really heavily invested in it. Um, okay. So like there's only cameras sort of in all the corridors and in like the, the public areas. There's no cameras like in the actual rooms. Uh, and he's scrolling through and you see like um, Lucia like working on a laptop in the bar. Um, and then sort of like she, she ejects this USB looks around, uh, like, downs, like, obviously downs her drink and orders another one, um, and as the waitress is sort of going to get a drink, she she gives another quick look around, and then it appears she, like, yawns next to this fern, um, yep. and then, like, she she stops the yawning, takes a drink, and then she's sort of sat in the hotel bar for, for like, a few hours more, uh, yeah, just sat next clean, to this big pot. How cl- clean is the security area? Um, I'm talking in terms of, are they drinking water there? Are they... Do they have any kind of mugs of coffee or anything along those lines? Yeah, they've got like mugs of coffee, like guys like half eaten sandwiches, sort of just like laying out there. It's, it's not like the cleanest place, but it's not like it's not horrifically dirty. It just looks like someone is sat in there, sort of working all day. Right. Okay. Um, I point out to the security guard at this moment. I, I, I pointed the camera, and, and you probably can see some smoke coming out of room five oh five or along the corridor, probably. I suspect, or something along those lines. Probably uh, you guys haven't set it on fire or anything, right? No, but is there no, any no, sort no, of no, no. is there any kind of commotion oh, yeah. or anybody running from five oh five or the area off? I don't. Are you you guys up fleeing or anything, right? No. 
Not yet. Uh, so I think what has actually happened is as soon as you made that call about the fireworks, the hotel like rang around and apologised to all the people in that floor. Right. And um, so are there people, are there people, like what I'm sort of saying, is there anybody that I can see on any of the cameras, any police or anything else that's going on? If uh, I can't see anything, I'll... Outside of the building, you can see some like, uh, you see like one patrol car, but it looks like they're very quickly having a look to make sure there's no like, like youths. I point out to the security guard, they're clearly having problems, that's those police officers. Maybe if you could give them some assistance, that's going to go down very well here. Uh, the guy like gets up and he's like, uh... You, Yes, of, of course. And I, I speak will. to him in fluent Spanish. I say, you should go and see these police officers and help them. And I really appreciate your help. You've done an amazing service, I say. He sort, of, he, he sort of looks to his boss to see if he can go, and his boss is like, like obviously like, usher him to go like quickly because he wants to make a, a sale. I put my hand round our dear friend, and as we sort of turn to go back towards the door to follow him out, I just grab a mug of coffee that's there. And hopefully he can't see me, and I splash it all over the uh, the tape area. Let's just make that a right mess. Yeah, and, so uh, go out. We, and we go out with him. We sort of see, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you splash it on the tape area, and it starts to like melt the tape, um, and that, that's like obviously unspooling. Uh, so there's there's going to be some clear error recovery problems there um and he sort uh, of takes you very simple hopefully works it'll give us a bit of time and now we know a rough idea where this usb was deposited so that gives me an opportunity and all the commotion to make my way over to the bar okay so let's smash cut back to the room yep. to see what these guys are doing yep of course so you, you've got the guy and every time you've tried to explain it to him he said no, just read then, and he keeps I've got drawing. to saunter through the hotel lobby, so it'd be like that. Right, <laughs> right hell go on. Constantly, re constantly repeating the same thing to this guy. It's literally not going to do And it's literally, no, no, it, like, every time he, like, keeps writing more, and it's literally mm. the same glyph, repeated almost like it's yeah. words in a sentence, but per literally perfectly done. So it, it's, it's exact the same type. Literally, same, like, the same diameter, the same, exactly the same flourish. Perfect every single time. Uh, wow. How how do this we is... put into a computer? You just Anytime. plug. It's a. I can't say the thing or the. Should get me. How, do, like do, I look. I do, I sort of whisper. I whisper to Halbjorn and I go, Halbjorn, are you just fucking with him? No, he's not making a lot of sense. Yes. I keep saying laptop, laptop. Put it in yes. the laptop. Uh, cool. But he mentioned so, a she, so I back to Italian. Who is she? I I could can't say her name it? otherwise. Well, could you write it down? He uh he's like yes yes and he and he like jots down on the paper and he turns it back to you and it's the exact yeah, same glyph, perfect. Can written. you can you draw us a picture of her? Ask him that. That. You yeah. He takes a few minutes. Um, and then he turns it around to you, and it's just a big version of that glyph. And he's like, <laughs> right, "Elvion, I'm bored of this guy now." And I he's turn and walk back into the helpful. room. He's not been very helpful. Um, we're on the, are we on the balcony good outside? Good picture of her. Uh, there is a balcony, balcony to the out. It, it's like bay doors onto like not even a balcony. It's kind of just like just like massive. a railing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. Yeah. I turn back um, to the room. While you're turning back to the room, I will. Sort of grab him under the chin and examine his eyes very. Does his eyes look like the eye that I have in my hand? Uh, uh no, he's got regular eyes. Uh, but the thing is like right on the back of the eye, so you wouldn't be able to see unless something happened. Um. Uh oh. James. I might be having bandwidth problems. Oh no, you good? Yeah, no, I'm You're here. Back. I'm back. There we go. Momentary lapse in bandwidth. Um. <laughs> Yeah, so, okay, so without short of digging an eye out with a spoon again, we'll not find out whether he's got his eye. Um, basically I look, no I mean, idea. is there anything else in the room that I can see? <laughs> like, obviously, we looked at the room yeah, before. Yeah, 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 you, you find a laptop, but it's not, um, it's not, like, anything special. It's just clearly, like, a notebook that someone's bought. Um, cool. And you do find a, like, the, the hard drive from it has been ripped out of it. And you find a really strong electromagnet, like hidden in one of the drawers, uh, in, like, with the hard drive. With the hard drive, yeah. See that is not. I, I, I'm pained by this. Leo is. It's, he's seeing this desecrated technology, and it pains him. Is he, is he oh. a tech monkey? He just pushes the drawer closed again, like. Oh. Sacrilege. 
Yeah, literally. Um, so I think, yeah, I'm... What are we doing with our with our friend here? I mean, that's up to him. Um... He's having fun now, at the minute. I'm leaving him to it. I, I ask him uh, to say who it is. I, I cannot. I've I've written it here, and he like does it again. And it's the same. Uh, at this point, he's got a gun in his face. Say her name. It's. And he takes like a few seconds, and and he looks at you, and he's like, Dominic Carp. I flicks back, uh, and we see the Amen. same pattern in veins on the back of his eye. I turn around to Albion at this point, and I go, "Oh my god, you killed him." No, no, the the the, the bird did. Yeah, it. not nice, is it? When you get accused of killing someone you didn't kill. I have no idea how you've done. I mean, that. I did. I did kill the other one. I shot him. <laughs> I, did, but I just. <laughs> so yeah, we, you know that we are, are we on the back of our hotel on the front. Uh, it's on the back. So there's That's it. Right. there's That's police massive. outside on that sort of balcony. Uh, it's not, not on the balcony, on the alley underneath. Like, talking to a security guard now. Like, very obviously right, one of the hotel to... security's, like, gone out to talk to them. Um, right, help you on. We need to go. We need to get out of here. I think, I don't know care where we go. I think we just need to leave. There we go. Yeah. Right, so. Okay, then uh, we should probably we'll head, We should head down. We should head down. Out of room. Let's go find Mace. Let's head down <laughs> so, to yeah. the lobby and find Mace. So, push Mace. The body over the bal- I push the body over the balcony yeah. and leave. What, with the police in the street? Yeah, they'll, they'll, they'll keep them busy. Ah! <laughs> okay, yeah, the body gets oh, thrown out. Please. We hear the Suicide. splat. All of the police, like, instantly look and then look up. Uh, and then, like, they're all, like, running into the hotel. Uh, right. So, You're... we'll deal with you guys oh. in a second. Uh, in the hotel bar, what is Mace Hunter doing? <laughs> Well, I've got, have I got the USB? Have I found it, located it? In the fern? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, yeah. you dig it out um, the fern. I've got my, I, what I'll do is I have a skill where I can um, have, uh, what's it called now? Uh, connected cover, where you can, um, there's a certain something actually. Um, I've got a skill where it allows me to hide an item, um, which can only be found under x-ray conditions as one of my cherries. Okay. Um, so I'd, I'd like to secure that item. I'm going to assume it's something really simple, like a t- typical kind of spycraft kind of thing. I, I have the item. I've sat down in the chair where she would have been. I slip the heel of my shoe slightly open, put the USB in that, slide it back. Yeah. Um, I get back up, jacket on my side. I realise the police are coming in, so I look even more casual. I put it in my hand, and I just start walking out towards the front of the lobby as if I'm waiting for somebody to catch me up. Yeah, the police sort of like push past you. Yeah. Um, on your I way make out. Make way. Uh, how are you two getting down to the lobby? I am not um, rushing. I'm going very su- casually because this guy's an idiot. We do have burner phones, is that right? Yeah, you've got a burner on you. And right. we would have their numbers, is that right? We haven't used them yeah. yet because it yeah. would be an emergency. I'd phone Leo because I'm a little bit worried about Al- Albion. Uh, he seems yeah. quite uh, very agitated. From the last time I saw him, he's got very, very hot. Yeah, um, we, we, I think... That's something we need to discuss later. I'll, I'll phone Leo. I think we need to leave. Uh, I'll phone Leo uh, on the burner phone, and I will be looking Ben to get rid of it pretty quickly as well. Once I've made the call, I won't. Get, that's the standard practice here. I imagine you've got um, like an um, a early two thousand style like flip phone. Yeah, and you just flip phone. Probably one of the first flip phones, and pretty poor cool one at that. Probably a Nokia, I think. Yeah, you, um, you dial Leo. I hope that it's the connection gets through to him. If it does, I just simply say, it, "It's Mace, uh, Leo." Uh, police are coming upstairs. I'm down in the uh, at the front of the hotel. I'll be waiting for you both there. And I, and I uh, put the phone down. Uh, look for a location, maybe uh, somewhere around the front where there's uh, a bin or an old, uh, maybe a cappuccino or something, where there's a cup of some sort of half liquid in it. Yeah, I'll a, deposit, bin. deposit the phone into the half liquid and throw that in the bin. Are you going to do the, uh, the classic 2000 spy thing of snapping the screen <laughs> off and then putting it in very, the bin? Uh, very much so, and then wait <laughs> uh, casually around the front. I have that newspaper, so I will uh, kind of casually, I know the police are around and there's been all sorts of activity, but I'll just roll out the paper and start reading really casually, but keeping an eye over the top of the paper for them to get out, hopefully. While you're, while you're waiting I've casually, lost you town, can, so you I'm just going to duck out for a minute and then come back, if that's all right, Ben. Uh, that's going to ruin everything but sure. 
I think I've got to let him back in as well, haven't I? Yeah, probably. Oh um, no! Technical difficulties. <laughs> let me. Uh, we'll be back what in a second. Welcome back. Right. So, Welcome back, everyone. Uh, yeah, Sorry so... about that. Technical difficulties. <laughs> <laughs> so now we're, now, we're, now we're technically sorted. Um, so yeah, Sean, you were breaking your phone and dropping it in the, the coffee and the... Uh, depositing it, the, depositing the uh, burner phone into the, the bin as well, just to make sure, doubly sure that it's gone. And then yeah. uh, just um, waiting outside, so looking over the top of my newspaper. Shortly after that, you hear the fire alarm go off. Excellent. Can I just backtrack, sorry, mm -hmm. slightly? Um, yep. I just want to go back to the room a second. Um, I would have tried to get the electromagnet from the drawer and left the hard drive with the laptop. Yeah, you can take the out the magnet. It's just like a really yeah. quick. It, like, even looking at it, like there's a piece of tape on it that says like hard drive burner. Like, that, right, like yeah. that's what I'm going to take. I'm going to take that. I'm going to have that on me as we leave the room. I'm not going to leave that in the room because that might be suspicious to anyone searching it later. Just a hard drive and a laptop would be less suspicious than a. I mean, there's a dead man, power. there's like a dead body with knives in it and yeah, but a toss that ring. Could but yeah, still sure. be no, but, but that could still be explained away. Like a, an actual high-tech piece of technology will ask Probably will spark a bunch of different questions. Explain much after I finish with the room. Okay, yeah, so you're no. on your way out. You've got your call. You've said what he needs there to say and a... then he's, he's destroyed the burner phone. There, there was a mini bar in that room, right? Yep. Spirits? You, you've not got very much time at all. Like, you need to be getting out unless you want to shoot out in the hallway. It's got spirits, right? Yeah. Poor light, leave. Cool. I leave. <laughs> I leave that's before that's him. I'm... The fire alarm. Yeah, you taking the stairs or the elevator? I'm taking the main stairs. Yeah, that's fine. You, as you're, like, walking down the stairs, I guess you try and act casual and some, like, policemen, like, run past you. Um... But because you're not, like, obviously geared up or tooled up, they, they kind of, like, think you're just a civilian, right? Um, I'm just, I mean, I guess there are a few people leaving quite quickly, so I'm kind of with them. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. My, there's, my, there's my plan is to right. wait for the panic masses and join them before the police arrive. Um, okay. So can you, have you got any kind of, like, blending in, like, an infiltration or? Oh, I lost my mouse pointer. I have two in infiltration and two in disguise. So two in infiltration? You want to give me either one point in either of those is fine. Uh, to spend, yeah? Yes. Yeah, I will take disguise. Excellent, yeah. So um, as everyone's sort of brushing, like running out, you do the same kind of expressions they're doing uh, and manage to like get past the cops who are trying to like move everyone out the way so they can get to the room that's like, I guess you left the door closed, right? So they're like trying to like yeah. get through the sea of people who are like running out of the hotel because they saw the body splat and they're kind of all panicking. Um, you all manage to meet up like just outside as everyone's sort of like milling around outside the hotel, like looking out, like trying to figure DMs. out what's going on. For the DM's reference, I forgot the name of the skill that I was trying to explain on the cherry, but it's actually called Perfect Holdout, and it does say that you can hide a small item on your person, in your clothing, on your person, and would only be detected with an x-ray. Yeah, I guess you've got like a, yeah, like you said, like a, the heel of your yeah. shoe is maybe... Just a simple, simple get out, standard sort of spy kind of trick. One yeah. of several that, ideas. That seems like a very James Bond-esque, that you could just like have yeah. this this pocket somewhere that no one would, would think to look Yeah. It just made sense under the circumstances. Anyway, now that they've joined us, obviously I'll explain. I have got the... I found the USB. Well, I suggest that we make our way as quickly as possible somewhere where we can find out what the damn, what's on this damn thing, and it needs to be away from this area. Where do you, where do you feel we should go? I don't really fancy going back to my hotel. Oh, uh, I think that's I a think we good should, idea. I think we should um, find an internet cafe. I like the sound of that. Yeah, you, uh, you managed to quickly find one. With, I'll um, put this in. I think it, it, is this your speciality, Leo? I say handing him the USB. I, 
I mean, I'm not the best with computers, but I'm the, I'm good at with crowds and people, and I know that crowds offer anonymity. More and suspicious I, I, of us I, to I, find I, a private police to search so, so this is to just. You, you... Sorry, go on. I was saying more, more so better for us to find some just somewhere public where people will be doing what we're literally going to be doing than Absolutely. try and break into yeah. somewhere to get some privacy. That it's easier for us to crowd it, crowd it, around. It, it, it seems like this thing might contain stuff we don't want anybody seeing at all. So we might be better off uh, buying a laptop off a shelf somewhere quickly and uh, using that. I'm, I'm saying, no. this, saying this, subtly cleaning the blood off a throwing knife. I have no problem uh, yeah. with your because suggestion. Because you're very big into subtlety, aren't you, Halbion? I have no problem with that suggestion, Halbion, and it's nice to see you back with us. In a more calm As way. As I make the comment ever. It's, it's been a while. Um, I don't know about you, but uh, work's been a bit skinny around here recently. I've tried to keep my hands clean. And my eyes down, rather than out. So what's the plan? Are you buying a new laptop, or are you uh, going I, to an internet I, I slap. I slap, slap Mace on the shoulder and say, you could uh, wield that credit card of yours, which you normally have, and uh, sort us out here. I, I roll a few credit cards out. There's probably quite a few. There's a Black Platinum card. There's a few others. American Express Gold. There's, there's quite a few. Yeah, we could use one of these. I look over. Why do you have American Express? Nobody takes it. Goddamn bloody Welsh people. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you for acknowledging it. <laughs> <laughs> it. Love it. Right, yeah. So you had to get that in there. <laughs> you managed to uh, to just find a regular like sort of electronic store and purchase a laptop. Um, I where are you going to turn this on? I think we could go. We could view I, it. There's in a probably a place. Yeah, I think I think that's not a bad that's not a bad suggestion. Assuming that it's charged up, we'd have to make sure that it is. Have we got something that you know that's that's charged that we can use right now? Obviously, as long as we can organise that, you could go find somewhere and plug it in. Like, but is there like a library we could go to? You could go to a library. In the box, they come with a charger in a box. When you buy it, you don't have to buy separately. Right. Libraries so, normally have like private study rooms that I guess we could just go to. And yeah, you can you can go to the library and find it's public with privacy. Yeah, let's do that. Plan. I, I like that plan. Yeah, the lady on the counter just says, "Oh, the the Wi-Fi is unsecured. Just um, just go up with your with your laptop. It, it'll be fine." That means nothing to Leo because he does nothing about computers. Uh, I, uh, at the very least, we should probably not use the Wi-Fi. It might not be good. I mean, it's a USB. It's probably just got files on it. I don't think we'll need internet. Yeah, exactly. Let's just see what's on this USB. So you're you're going to go into the library. Yeah, and, and we'll um, find a private find a private study room. Just if we have to pay have for it, we'll pay for it in cash. Um, we just need somewhere where we can just have a look at what's on this USB. So, how new of a laptop have you bought? Well, we've got to say within a couple of years, really, of, of two thousand five. If, if it's on a shelf, it will probably be current. Okay. Because we we went and went into an electronic shop. So you're opening it up before you put the USB in. Are you doing anything with the laptop? Uh, well, I, where, what's the sort of scene of the room we're in? So what's the kind of so situation? It's kind of like a little private study room. Um, it's got like fluff, frosted glass. Uh, like It's like a frosted glass kind of cubicle with a little table on it with uh, like power outlets on the table. So the glass is like frosted so you, you could... And there's no security cameras things. in the room, yeah? Uh, there is. There's, there's one security camera, but you can you can point the, the laptop away. Um, yeah, it. I'll... I'll... I'll move into a position where I can just I'm not going to do anything too clever I'm just going to make sure that that lead is cut and then I'm going to stand by the door to give them time in case anybody wants to come in and find out why the feed has gone that probably being a library they're not going to bother but you never know and I'll stand by the door so nobody's coming in while they're checking the laptop over so you don't you've... anybody have like electronic surveillance or computery things what how are we yeah I, I have electronic surveillance how many you got in it two I mean, the, ca the the laptop's obviously got a camera on, but you can you just whack a bit of tape over it or something. Yeah, that's what we uh, do because just, you had electronic was... surveillance. Can we turn the laptop on? Make sure there's nothing on there that's like like we we know that it's like we could just search it, make sure there's nothing dodgy about it or anything before it's, we. Without any kind of digital forensics, like anyone want to spend spycraft? Tradecraft, you mean? Tradecraft, my my bad. Tradecraft, anyone? Want to yeah, spend okay. Tradecraft? I'll I'll I will knock a couple of points in spade. I've got two points in there. So how many would you like spending? Uh, just spend the one, and I'll I'll let you know. Okay. Uh, 
Uh... Yeah, there you go. Pretty um, much all, one... pretty much all laptops come pre-installed with essentially spyware for the government to just look at. Um, I... So like, nothing's ever one hundred percent secure unless you've cleaned everything off of it yourself and got someone who knows what they're doing to like put a fresh install of like a very specific OS. Like you would have to jump through a lot of hoops to get this thing completely clean. Um, but the amount of throughput that the NSA gets, like a completely new laptop, they're probably like a completely new laptop brought in a European city. They're probably not going to have too many eyes on straight away. Like in that case, unless I... they've got like a specific thing that they're looking for. Can I flip it over and whip out the Wi-Fi card before we turn it on? Do you have anything in computers? No, but I was hoping electronic surveillance might help me there. How much have you got left in electronic surveillance? Oh, I have one point. Uh, give me a roll. I need a four. Uh, you can spend that one point to enhance your roll. Yeah. That's an investigative oh. ability, though, isn't it? So. Uh, ability. Yeah, but he doesn't have the actual ability, so I'm I'm letting him try to to mess with it. With what cool. he does, well, like because he's kind of got some kind of knowledge about electronic devices, but he doesn't know like he wouldn't instantly recognize yeah, what okay, he needs yeah. to cut a Wi-Fi card out with. So four six plus one four four. Oh yeah, no, that's fine. Yeah, you, you it's labeled Wi-Fi card. You you, you spot it pretty much instantly, and, and you're able to disconnect. <laughs> that it one's just there. <laughs> awesome, um, and. I'm assuming I then put that to zero for the time being. To yes. Charge the so cool. you're plugging the USB in, yeah? Uh, yeah. Rip, rip, rip Wi-Fi card out and the a SIM card holder if it's got one. Take the SIM card out if there is anything. Same kind of deal. So um, on the USB, we see like several different PDF files, um, and one like video file. Um, the PDF files are all like people's names, um, and then like okay. uh, like a. a a dash and then like a, a date um opening them up you can see their like post-mortem uh sort of analysis stuff so it's like the person who's died like pictures of all of their like injuries and like what they think they've died of but every single one of these has had their heart literally like ripped out of their chest uh you can you can note down all the names and i'll give you them after the stream because it's not it's not vitally important right now so they've they've all like very clearly had their like chest cavity like torn open um, and you can see that all of these uh, all of these documents have got a stamp over them that says um, like in Spanish top secret clearance vino counter king uh, in Spanish uh, so so wine counter king so that's like the the security clearance code uh, the one video file is really grainy security footage like looking into this uh, looking into this like almost like gentleman's study kind of thing. Uh, someone's like looking at like a, a piece of art and they're just in their study like smoking a cigar um, and we see like the window shatter they turn to look and they're like dead in fear um, as this thing sort of like rushes into the room it's almost like it's like blur on this camera because it's, it's like almost like a slideshow frame rate we see this thing rush into the room we see like a spout of blood come out of this person um, we, we like cut to the next frame uh, and the and the things like standing over like uh, the the person with their like chest cavity opened up. Uh, we cut to the next mm. frame, and the person with the chest cavity opened up is like sat up, like looking at the at the thing that's come in. So chest, so it's gone from like lying on the floor with his chest cavity open to shut up, like sat up, talking to the mm. like almost. It looks like it's almost like conversing with the the entity or the person that's come in. Um, and then the oh, next yeah. shot. In like the slideshow is the person lying down again, and the entity not being there, but the window being smashed open, and that's that's all you get. And that file is named upil. Dot mp4, and that How I guess uh, upyr, and that I guess is where we see like our credits start rolling on this episode. Um, so we we basically get like all of you like looking back at the monitor and like looking at each other like confused at what you've seen. Uh, and then we get like the credits scrolling through, and and and, and we get like uh, everyone like Hal Bjorn played by James, like Leo Bacanro played by Jordan, Mace Hunter played by Sean, uh, and that yeah. is tonight's episode of Knights Black Agents Blood Feud, episode one. Uh, our heroes have found uh, evidence of some supernatural goings on uh, in the underworld of 
Europe. So how did we all find it? Excellent. I that just wonder, good. was was that Albion? Albion, was that your family? Just at the end there, I just wonder. It wasn't your family, was it? Dad, mum? You've lost me. Well, you rip people apart, so... <laughs> <laughs> it just says, I just wondered if that was mummy and daddy at the end there. I said, oh, mummy, daddy, I'm back. No, it was excellent. Thanks very much, Ben. Really enjoyed it. Yeah, it yeah no, that was really cool. That was a lot of fun. Was that... Well, well one question about our video. Did the entity... Uh, but we weren't able to identify anything about it at all. It was just like, it was like right. a man sized, um, but like the security footage was so grainy, um, mm -hmm. and it seemed to have this sort of almost aversion to light um, that you couldn't really spot. Like you, you couldn't make out a face from it. Uh, you couldn't even make out a face of the guy who got his chest cavity like ripped open. Um, but you know, you, you've got the, the post mortem got, analysis. Have we got details of who these individuals are that have been ripped open? Is that is that the case? Yeah, yeah. It's it's basically yeah. a bunch of post mortems, and you've got all the names. I'll I'll give you all the right. names next session. Yeah, Fabulous. we should find okay. out the connection between them. Right, brilliant. One. Very much enjoyed it. It was very good fun. Yeah. Characters, uh, there was some really good character interplay as well in a very short period of time. So that was fun. Yeah, I will try and improve the stream quality for this last na uh, for next time. Unfortunately, our dice bot uh, isn't showing up on the stream for some reason, so I'll have to get that fixed. Uh, but. I guess it's it's goodbye from everyone, so we'll we'll do a little yeah, plug whatever you. you want outro thing. So James, have you got anything you want to plug uh, anywhere people no. can find you on the internet? No, I hide from the internet most of the time. So you hide from the internet. Excellent. Don't look for James. Like a good spy. <laughs> He's a spy. <laughs> Very good spy. <laughs> Jordan, where can people find you if they they want to hear more from you? Oh uh, yeah, so the the username that Ben's got for me on screen is my Twitter handle, so find me on No, it's not. It, I need it, to fix that, but next yeah, time no, isn't, yeah. <laughs> I know. Yeah. I've only just seen it and realised that it's a mistake, Ben. It is it is that, but with an X in between the two words. Oh, that's fine. I've put Jordan because I didn't I didn't finish the screen overlay in time. Uh... Yeah. It's Masterkind with an X between the two words. We will have it properly fixed for next week. We shall. Right, and Sean, where can people find um, you? Uh, you you just uh, message you or anybody that knows how to contact us knows how to do it. I'm very much like uh, James. Uh, if you need help, you know how to find us. It's always the best way. Uh, my character ends, by the way, Mace, with the, uh, you know, looking at the videotape, but remembering back to that pub in Belfast and the scene of the police arriving and the explosion afterwards. That's how he would, in his mind's eye, see the credits roll. Oh, He'd be remembering back to that. Right, uh, and I'm the Flickering Torch. You guys can find me on the Flickering Torch on YouTube, and I guess here now. Uh, or, or maybe we'll be moving to YouTube, but they kind of screwed us in the end. Uh, right. yeah. So, thanks everyone, uh, and we'll Thank see you. you next week at the same time, 7.30, for the next episode of Knights Black Agents Blood Feud. Thanks very Thank much.